The reenactments and commentary in this program may contain frank talk of a sexual nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Did the King of Pop play the sympathy card to achieve some rather devious goals? More allegations and more drama. Hello, I'm James Curtis, and welcome to East coverage of the Michael Jackson trial. Michael Jackson acknowledged cheering fans as he arrived outside the Santa Maria Courthouse. Inside, as usual, a very different story as Jackson hears some rather damaging and disturbing testimony from now the mother of the pop singer's 1993 accuser. The mother describes a luxurious Las Vegas vacation. She, her daughter Lily, Lily, and her son Jordan, who's also referred to as Jordy, took, they all took this vacation with Michael Jackson. Here's what she told the district attorney, Tom Sneddon, according to the courtroom transcripts. And who was in your room when you first got there? Or who was staying in your room? Jordan, myself, Lily, and Michael. All in the same room? Correct. Now, did those arrangements change at any point in time? Yes. And when did they change? The second night, things changed. With regard to things changed, could you tell me what changed first? Well, there were approximately three bedrooms in that suite at the Mirage Hotel. Lily and I were staying in one bedroom, Jordy had another bedroom, and Michael had another bedroom. The second night, they were going to see a performance, Cirque du Soleil performance. They meaning who? Jordy and Michael. Okay. And Lily and I. <laughs> it was around 11 p.m. at night, and I got a call from somebody at Cirque du Soleil saying, where's Michael? And I said, he should be there with my son. They said, he's not here. A little while later, another call, and he still didn't show up. Mm -hmm. They still did not show up. And I, there's a knock on the door, and it's Michael and Jordan, and they came back into the suite. Next, the tears of the king. Now, could you describe for the jury Mr. Jackson's demeanor at the time they came back into the room? He was sobbing, he was crying, shaking, trembling. Michael Jackson was? He was. And what about your son's demeanor? He was quiet. Now, at that point in time, did Mr. Jackson tell you why he was upset or crying? Yes. All right, tell the jury what he said. He said, you don't trust me, we're a family. Why are you doing this? Why are you not allowing Jordy to be with me? And I said, he is with you. He said, but my bedroom, why not in my bedroom? We fall asleep, the kids have fun, boys. Objection, non-responsive narrative. Narrative, sustained. All right, tell us what Mr. Jackson said that he wanted your son to sleep with him in his bed, what you said to Mr. Jackson. What I said to Michael was, this is not, this is not anything that I want. This is not right. Jordy should be able to do what he wants to do. He should be able to fall asleep where he wants to fall asleep. Is this you talking or Mr. Jackson speaking? I was saying this, and Michael was trembling and saying, we're family, Jordy is having fun. Why can't he sleep in my bed? There's nothing wrong, there's nothing going on. Don't you trust me? Howard, I gotta go to you on this, having represented Michael Jackson during the 1993 case. Give us your take. Well, uh, this is a pretty apt description of Michael, uh, like a 10, 11, or 12-year-old. His reaction, his response, this is what he wants, almost uh, throwing a tantrum-like. So it's pretty consistent with, I think, the image and profile that we see. Again, I know I've said this over and over, I don't understand what the relevance of this is in this case unless it is only to paint him in a negative, evil light, even though... Of course it is. That's what the well, prosecution case is about. I understand that. No, no, that's not what the prosecution case is about. The prosecution case is about molestation charges against someone else, not... Jordy. Well, but we have to wait because of 1108, because 1108, the evidence code in California and the amendment called the Michael Jackson Amendment, um, is really to say, to show a propensity. And that's why this is here. It's character evidence to show a propensity, and Mr. Stedden's allowed to do it. And that's really the bottom line, and Sean, I mean, like it or not, and we know we don't like it, we, Howard, don't like it, we understand that, <laughs> but this is the law in the state of California. It's an exception to probably the rest of the country. Correct. In fact, right. there was a case, I understand, overturned in one of the police molestation cases just in the last week or so because of this past type of conduct evidence coming in, they threw the case out, they got to retry it, not yeah, so in but California. You know what, I, I agree with Howard. This does not seem to be perverted behavior. It seems more like childlike behavior. And to that extent, it really fits into the defense case more than the prosecution oh, case. Oh, come on, it Sean, you've got, got a kid. Exactly, exactly. You've got a kid, you've got a kid, you've got an adult 
acting like a kid, yeah. that's the good spin on it, but no, the yeah, bad but spin on it. I want Jordy to sleep with me yeah, in my bed. But I mean, so that's a problem. What? Let's guess what it means and use it to convict somebody of a crime that the evidence, at least to date, seems to be questionable about. This is why this amendment is wrong, particularly in a case like this. It well, may be wrong, but it's the law. It but is the law. That doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it kid. It mean like it's going to stay that way. a kid myself. When you have a 40-plus-year-old man protesting mightily, as he does according to this testimony, about wanting a young boy to sleep in his room, yeah, Howard, I think that comes in. As we continue, Jordy's mother, her name is June, by the way, recalls just how persuasive Michael Jackson can be. Did you at some point in time relent and allow your son to sleep with Michael Jackson in his bedroom? Yes, I did. And was it after that discussion on that night? Yes. Is that the first occasion? Correct. When you were in Las Vegas, do you remember how many nights in Las Vegas that your son Jordan slept with the defendant, Michael Jackson, in Michael Jackson's room? I would say two occasions. Now, at some point in time after you had agreed to let your son Jordan sleep with Mr. Jackson, were you the recipient of a gift from Mr. Jackson? Yes, I was. Would you describe that to the jury? It was a gold bracelet, and it was given to me by Michael. And you say a gold bracelet. Had you seen that gold bracelet in a shop of some kind before? I had seen it before, yes. And the brand name of that bracelet? Cartier. Was it expensive to your knowledge? Oh, yes, it was. When was it you received this gift in relationship to having agreed to allow your son to sleep in bed with Mr. Jackson? I think it was the next evening when we were attending a show, a magic show by David Copperfield. You know, I get attached to these actors. I liked our last time then, but this guy's doing a pretty good job, too. Next, Michael Jackson makes himself right at home. Now, were there occasions after you got back from Las Vegas, let me, where Mr. Jackson actually was invited to stay at your residence where you lived at this time? Yes. Now, what city was that uh, you lived in at this time? Santa Monica. We're talking about 1993 in the spring, right? Correct. Okay. Where did you live? Santa Monica. And during this time, did Mr. Jackson ever spend the night at your residence? Yes, he did. And do you recall on how many occasions Mr. Jackson spent the night at your residence? I would say more than 30 times. And were some of those occasions on consecutive days or nights? Yes. And how long consecutively do you think that that occurred? Oh, it could be a week or two at a time. Where did Mr. Jackson stay in the house? In Jordan's bedroom. Are there more than one bed in that room? No. I'm assuming that Jordan was going to school during this period of time. He was. So Mr. Jackson would spend the night there. What would happen when Jordan would go to school? To your knowledge, what did Mr. Jackson do? Michael would leave. And approximately what time would he return? After Jordan came home from school. And so was this the routine that was followed during the time that Mr. Jackson was staying at your residence? Yes. <sighs> Sean Chapman, Holly, I just continue to shake my head. I You've see that. got kids. <laughs> I've got kids. You let a grown man, Michael Jackson, space cadet, Gandhi, I don't care who it is, come into your home now and sleep with your kid. It's, it's really outrageous. But what is important here is the openness that Michael Jackson is showing. It really demonstrates a lack of consciousness of guilt, that he's willing to be seen by everyone, to go to the mother and say, I want to sleep in this child's bed. I bet you will see a defense expert who comes in and says, this is not consistent with your ordinary pedophile behavior. This just sort of openness. Ricky, it sounds no, like no, a good argument. It, well, Sean is always very articulate with good arguments. But let me give you the other side. It's the fact that he's not out there letting <laughs> everyone know but he's letting a mother know and a father know presumably and perhaps a sibling but the way he's letting them know is throwing away let's get another Cartier bracelet over yeah. here and, let's and, and take the another problem is, Sean, the problem with that analysis let me get this other piece of tape in and get to this break but the problem with that analysis we'll explore this more when we return is that is he buying off the parents as sure. Ricky just pointed out in order to get to the kid is it really all that open when we return we're hearing from and we will continue to hear from the 1993 accuser's mother. But where's the 1993 accuser? His name's Jordy. Does his mother even know? Stay with us. The reenactments and commentary in this program may contain frank talk of a sexual nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back. 
Under questioning by District Attorney Tom Snetton, the mother of Jackson's 1993 accuser tells the jury about the King of Pop's jet-set lifestyle and a rather alarming effect it appears to have had on her son. Here's what happened in the courtroom according to the courtroom transcripts. Did you notice any change in your son? Yes. Jordan? Yes. What was the nature of that change? Well, he started dressing like Michael. He started acting withdrawn, sort of smart-alecky, not as sweet as he normally was, and withdrawn. He just didn't want to be with us, Lily and I. Had you always been close prior to that? Extremely close. Okay, let's talk a little bit about your trip to France. Yes. Do you recall approximately when that was? I think the middle of May. And how did you get there? We flew. And was it on a charter or a commercial airline? Commercial airline. And you say weak, so could you tell us who it was that you went with? My daughter, my son, and Michael. And when you got to France, where in France did you stay? Monaco. And how long were you in Monaco? Approximately four days. And during that time that you were there, where did your son Jordan sleep? In Michael Jackson's bedroom. Now, did you ever go into that bedroom? Yes. And were they in bed together on occasion? On occasion, yes. Now, during the time that you were in Monaco, did you do any shopping? Yes. And how was it that you... Uh, let me put it this way. Who went shopping with you? My daughter. You and Lily? Yes. And how many days did you do that? Oh, one day. And who was paying for the... Michael was. I'm sorry? Michael was. <laughs> and how did he arrange that? I think I was given a credit card, his credit card. So you went shopping in Monaco on Michael Jackson's credit card, you and your daughter? Yes. Recurring themes, folks. At this point, will the jurors be thinking enough is enough or it's about time, as the mother of the 1993 accuser says she finally made a stand against Michael Jackson, but the gifts kept coming. Well, what did Mr. Jackson say about the situation? Why can't we be a family? Why are you objecting to Jordy staying with me? Why can't we be a family? Why don't you trust me? He was upset that I wanted my son back, that I, I didn't like the situation. It was getting out of hand. Now, you've told the ladies and gentlemen of the jury that Mr. Jackson had given you a bracelet at one point in time and that you had gone shopping with Mr. Jackson on his credit card in Monte Carlo. Were there any other occasions when Mr. Jackson gave you gifts? Yes. What else did he give you? He also gave me jewelry. And do you recall approximately when that was? I think it was approximately in June. And what kind of jewelry? A pair of earrings, a necklace, and a ring. And where were these items when you first saw them? The boxes were open on my bed in Santa Monica. At your house? Yes. Oh, everybody's getting a little incensed about this. Howard, I want to talk to you in a moment about this tantrum uh, evidence we heard a little while ago. But Ricky first. Give me your take on this parent. I'm thinking these jurors can't like this woman I'm, about her I'm conduct. I'm wild. I'm outraged. I mean, we may as well be in Bangkok. Yeah. She is going and selling her son. It sounds like that. And I think that one of the issues that the government better think about here and think about carefully is how these jurors react to this mother. Um, the theme, the recurring theme, gifts, lavish treatment, same theme with Gavin, though it certainly seems that Jordy's mother had a lot more over a longer time. And it seems that way. Howard, I want to get back to that tantrum evidence that we heard uh, earlier. You spent a lot of time around Michael Jackson. Did you ever observe any similar behavior? He didn't get his way. He got frustrated. He started acting like, acting like, as you describe, a small child. Look, there are stories about Michael acting upset, sometimes coming close to tears or breaking down in tears in business situations when film ideas weren't accepted or, or, or ideas for concerts similar or Similar to what we heard today? Well, similar in the sense they broke down, yeah. he got upset, he cried, but you've you got to give me a minute to get something in. Because right. Ricky and you keep saying 1108 allows this evidence in. It only allows it in when a judge believes it's appropriate to let it in. And this is the type of evidence, I want to say it again, that I believe is prejudicial and, and the prejudice greatly outweighs any probative value. No doubt about this that. Lady, <laughs> this lady clearly took jewelry, took watches, allowed her son to be with this with Michael 30 times or more, and now she's up there painting a picture for purposes that yet describe criminal conduct. And we're going to talk about that legal concept of the uh, prejudicial effect, uh, the substantial probative value, that is, what does it prove being substantially outweighed by the prejudicial effect? That's the legal catchphrase. We'll explain that a little bit more. But, Howard... 
<sighs> it just doesn't look good. On cross-examination, defense attorney Tom Mesro seems to wonder why the mother doesn't let her son, Jordy, the 1993 accuser, speak for himself. And how old is Jordy now? He's 25 years old. Can I ask you when you last spoke to him? 11 years ago. You talked about gifts that Mr. Jackson gave you, okay? Okay. Did you ever ask for any of those gifts? No. Did he just give them to you on his own initiative as far as you're concerned? Yes. Okay. Tell us all the gifts you recall him giving you. A gold bracelet, a pair of earrings, a necklace, a ring, a gift certificate to a boutique. That's what I recall. Okay. And you said he gave you his credit card to use. Yes. Did he do that more than once? He might have, yes. And do you recall what you bought with Michael Jackson's credit card? I know I, I think two handbags. Anything else? Not that I recall, no. Shopping sprees everywhere, folks, and hardly none to help you escape the clutches of a horrible individual. That's what the prosecution says, at least. Next, an attempt to articulate the meaning of speculate. Do you remember telling the district attorney in Los Angeles that when you talked to your ex-husband, Evan, about Michael Jackson's relationship with your family, that Evan saw this as a wonderful means for Jordy not having to worry for the rest of his life? Would you repeat your question? Yes. Didn't you tell the Los Angeles district attorney that your ex-husband, Evan, the father of Jordy, told you that the relationship with Michael was a wonderful means of Jordy not having to worry for the rest of his life? Yes. And to you, that meant Michael Jackson supporting you financially for the rest of your life, correct? No. Well, that's what you thought your ex-husband meant by it, true? Calls for speculation. Speculation. <laughs> sustained, sustained. Just asking you what you thought, not what your ex-husband thought. Well, I'm speculating also. I would be speculating if I answered. Well, if someone says to you, this is a wonderful way not to have to worry for the rest of our life, doesn't that suggest that maybe someone is thinking about Michael Jackson supporting you? Your Honor, I'm going to object. We've been through all this. Calls for speculation. Sustained. All right, Sean Chapman, Holly, you're up. Your son gets taken away from you, oh, 11 years ago. That's big. It's big, and it's horrible. We all agree that this mother allowing her child to sleep with Michael Jackson in the way that she has is horrible. But, but, here's the but, she's either the most terrible parent ever, or she had some reason to believe that nothing nefarious was going on. Well, now, either way, either way, either okay. way, it's horrible that she would allow him to sleep with her son. But maybe she had reason to believe that it was this childlike kind of kids hanging out sleeping party thing. That's the only thing we can say. All right. Now, her. we're not saying that the son was taken away. We just know that they haven't had any contact yes. in 11 years. But still, even if it's this young man, Jordy's own choice, that still has to speak volumes, doesn't it? When we return... This trial has had everything from Peter Pan to Pinocchio, George Lopez to Macaulay Culkin. What's next? The Exorcist? Yeah, we'll be right back. This case is not about lawyers or anyone else becoming celebrities. This defense is going to be conducted with professionalism and dignity at all times. The reenactments and commentary in this program may contain frank talk of a sexual nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back. The 1993 accuser's mother may have been upset about Michael Jackson's relationship with her young son at some point anyway, but did she do anything to stop it? Here's what she told defense attorney Tom Mesro according to the courtroom transcripts. At some point, did you all see an exorcist movie? No. Do you recall anyone watching an exorcist movie? I was told Jordan and Michael watched an exorcist movie. All right. Did you ever object to Jordy sleeping in Michael's room on that trip? Yes. And what did you say? 
Jordy, when you come home, go to your bed. Go to your own bed. Come to our bed, not to Michael's bed. He said, Mom, I want to stay there. And I was very upset about that. Now, you indicated that at one point, Jordy and Michael had the flu, right? Correct. And where did you find out they had the flu? In the hotel room. And were they staying in the same room at that point? Yes, they were. Did you ever complain about that? Yes. And what happened? The room was boarded up. I couldn't get in there. It started to get weird now. Things started to go downhill pretty quickly. Did you ever take your son and leave on your own? No. Sean Chapman Holly, another recurring theme you never left on your own. Yep, we just keep seeing it. You know, the worst part, I think, I agree with Howard, that this really is so much more prejudicial than probative. The only probative thing that I've seen, and again, it's subject to interpretation, is the behavior, the change in his behavior, that he becomes withdrawn, that they had been close initially and now he moves away. And again, for that's purposes really of our non-attorney so viewers, far. probative meaning that it proves something that's relevant that should come in under the law of this but, case. But you're, you're still dealing, James, with propensity. Yeah. And, and regardless Which of... means character. It it does. means if, if you're a bad once, person, this is the way you do it. And if you did it once, you're going to do it again. And if this is your pattern. So we have the pattern of the licking, which is one of the ones that gives me the creep factor. Yeah. We have the pattern of the buying off of the parents. Um, we have the pattern of, I, you know, let him sleep in my bed, you know, the love. And so that's really what they're trying to do is show this seduction and perhaps this extortion. See, what they're trying to do is prejudice the jury. Of this course judge, they are, but Howard, come on, let's be true. Let let's be real. This wait, 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 wait. judge is allowing it to the happen. The prosecution's case is about prejudicing the jury against the defendant. No. That's really what the trial is about. No, no, that's, that's how you not get a what the trial is supposed to be about. That's sure. Not what the, no, you're wrong, and I am correct. The system is supposed to search for truth, and what's happening here is this judge has allowed evidence to come in without the victims. We have no idea what took place with Jordy. We have no, we have idea. no idea, what and the mother, the by the way, closed, doesn't but... even testify that anything wrong took place. That's true. That's it very is, true. It However, is an we... exploitation of a legislative amendment that, that was enacted, and this is not the purpose for it. All right. We'll see whether or not the court agrees when it goes to appeal, as it probably will if there's a conviction. That's all for us today. 7.30, Monday through Friday. We'll see you.